Good morning, everybody. It's David here from EC Bubble. I am joined by the delightful Crick, and we have a special guest in Elsie Bay as well, one of the songwriters. How are you? Are you well? Yes, I'm very nervous already. <laughs> <laughs> don't be, don't be. How are preparations going? Do you feel kind of um, ready for next week? Are you excited? Are you more nervous than excited? Um, I'm very excited, of course, but the nervous thing that comes up right now, <laughs> it's like for, for two days now where I'm like this, but maybe it will work out when we are rehearsals in the rock hall on the big stage. Hopefully mm -hmm. that will happen. For sure, absolutely. And Elsie, it's delighted, uh, delighted to have you still in that Eurovision community, still releasing music and, and helping other artists on their journey as well. How are you doing? How's everything your side this past year? I'm good, I'm good. And, and this is my first year in, in two years not competing myself. So um, yesterday I was watching Semi-Final 2 and MGP and just relaxing, having fun, watching my friends perform. So <laughs> I'm very good this year, yeah. It definitely makes a difference when you're on the sofa as opposed to uh, on stage, I can imagine, in terms of <laughs> fear. Absolutely, and absolutely. So this year I'm only enjoying everything, yes. Good, I'm glad to hear. Um, Crick, so the reason we're here, obviously, Luxembourg Song Contest, it is also a special one. Um, this is the first time Luxembourg have competed at Eurovision for, I think, in all of our lifetimes, so over three decades. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a big one. If you do go, you found out that you were one of the artists shortlisted to, to represent and perform at the, the national final. How did you feel? What, what kind of went through your mind when you got told that you were one of the lucky few? I work as a nurse, so I was in hospital. I worked uh, on Sunday mid, uh, Sunday afternoon, and uh, then somebody called me from the urgence. How do you say that? I don't know, but they called me. I should take that patient to my to my um, floor, and I was like, no, please. I have so much work right now. I don't have any nerves to to do that. And then they said, you have to, you have to. So I went downstairs, I took, I, I came to the room where the patient was, the patient. <laughs> and then um, I was like, ah, oh, now there is someone coming. I am so hungry, where, I, where am I? And he was totally into drugs, like with the medication and everything. And I said to myself, quick, please, no, please be good. <laughs> I had I had no nerves at all, really. And then um, there came like a confetti bomb behind me, and uh, he had a camera on on in his also by his feet. And I was like, why is he filming me? I I, I thought he was like a crazy one who's just filming. And yeah. And then there came that confetti bomb, and there were people with cameras. And uh, you're you're one of the finalists. And I said, what? I didn't and. I didn't realize anything. I was totally into my job and it was crazy. I cried the whole day. <laughs> As I mentioned, Luxembourg is now in the contest for the first time in over three decades and I think in all of our lifetimes. Um, how does that feel for you? Does that add more pressure onto you? Does that add more excitement? Well, I feel a lot of pressure, but is it more than it would be if it was last year too? I don't know. but. Um, I think the musician industry here in Luxembourg, there is, there are big musicians, there is a lot of music and um, a lot of different styles and I think we have good musicians here in Luxembourg, but it's always, okay, this one is from Luxembourg, I don't like it, I, I think there is so, that competition or I don't know, but I feel like sometimes people don't um, support Luxembourgish musician and now I hope that the Eurovision thing would uh, change that. I have to obviously ask you about the song as well, so Drowning in the Rain. Um, what does that song mean to you, Crick? When you're singing that song, what are you thinking of? How do you feel about that song? Um, I love the song <laughs> and I don't say that because I have to. <laughs> um, I think it's a very dramatic song and I, I love dramatic songs and um, the orchestral part is amazing. They did such a great job and uh, with the lyric it's about love, also a lost love, but you are kind of over it, but not so. And um, I like everybody has been through a lot of um, 
broken hearts maybe so i can feel that too and uh, i think the lyrics is amazing also all these uh synonyms are the words that i how do you say that like um, <clears throat> like the year of ocean and all these these uh lyrics that are not it's not about the the ocean but about the year of the ocean like you metaphor, know metaphor yes sorry <laughs> thank you and i think very very cool Fantastic. And, and Elsie, you obviously are one of the songwriters on the song. What does the song mean to you? What was kind of the process behind the writing of it? Um, so I wrote it with the same team as I did my last MGP entry. Um, I think we we liked writing um, with each other, so we, we did another session. And it's just one of those songs that, that come easily. Uh, you sit down, you write it, and, and all of a sudden it's there. Um, I really like it. I. I am proud of what I contributed with in that song, and, um, but it's very hard to sing. So I'm very happy that we got someone like Craig on board to <laughs> to do it properly. No, it, it's uh, it's definitely a sing. It's a belt by the end of it. Um, but I think, as Absolutely. you said about the orchestral features, I love what I love about it is the um, just like the bond esque the, the drama and the escapade of it all, which I think is is super exciting to be able to tell that story and. I'm uh, I'm excited to hear you sing as well, Chris. I think, as, as Elsie said, it's a, it's a challenge. But um, I was listening to some of your videos, some from your covers, from the Voice of Germany, and I think you've got you've got the voice to to sell it. So um, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in terms of the, the show, then obviously it's next weekend. You say the re rehearsals are starting in the next couple of days. And um, can you give anything away about your stage performance? What you have planned? Are you allowed to tease us? I don't know much yet, but um, I think that we said that the song is already very dramatic and it has so much power and so much uh, that I don't need to do many things. <laughs> I think I would just stand there. <laughs> and let the voice do the talking and let the song do the talking. Yes, exactly. But maybe as well, we have rehearsals now um, today, uh, tomorrow. We will start with that, and um, I don't know yet what they have in their minds. So we'll see. But I think it will be for me. No, not mad much dancing things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would look a little weird if you were doing a full-blown dance routine. I think. <laughs> but, uh, um, no, that that's fantastic, and. Obviously, we will talk about Eurovision as well, the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, Elsa, I think I've, I already know the answer for you, but I'd love to hear from both of you. Are you fans of the contest? Uh, if, you, if so, what are kind of your, some of your favourite songs, maybe your favourite artists from, from the past years? Um, Elsie, I'm, I'll, I'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been paying attention more and more every year. Um, and uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Alexander Rybak from uh, 2009 was a, was a big thing. I was uh, about 12, 13 years old. And um, yeah, that made me really interested in the show as well. Um, and, you know, Alessandra, I think she did a great job last year. Um, I feel extra connected to the people that I know from, from, the, from the Norwegian competitions, obviously. Um, but I also really liked uh, the year 2021 with Monskin and also the French and the Swiss entry that year was amazing. I can't remember myself sitting uh, in front of the TV and watching it as a kid. I was more like um, the one who goes to YouTube and then watch the show after. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. But um, sure, there are many, many good songs. In my opinion, when you went to Eurovision, your song is good. <laughs> it just needs it's just a type of um, what do you like and whatnot. But like Arcade is a beautiful song. Euphoria, Lorene is amazing. Um, Fairy Tale, you said Alexander uh, Rayback is amazing song. And uh, I like the common lines. Uh, Linnet, sorry, that's nice too. No. And, uh, too late for love. John Lundvik, it's very amazing and very cute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of beautiful songs, I think. Perfect. And, and you as an artist, Crick, as well, how would you describe your, your sound of music, your artistry, who are your influences? Um, I think I'm more the ballads, 
I, I like singing ballads. I'm definitely more of a ballad kind of guy myself as well. <laughs> so it's no surprise I'll see that your songs last year and, and the year before were two of my favourites. Um, would you ever go back? Third time lucky. Would you ever compete again for Norway? I mean, uh, I had a lot of fun. So, so yes, I, I think uh, there's definitely a chance if I feel like I have the right song. Uh, but I do think I want to wait just a couple years more. Um, because I've already done it and I've done it um, back to back. So um, just to give the Norwegian audience a break and yeah. <laughs> but uh, maybe in a few years when it will come more of a, as a surprise, I think. That'd be fun. But having said that, you've still been very involved. You've still been all doing the songwriting, both with Prick's song in Germany as well. Um, last year and this year, in fact. Will you continue to do those songwriting camps? Do you enjoy those? Is it lovely to meet different kind of teams that you can work with and, and write music with? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really like being a songwriter for other people because um, then I can do things that I necessarily can't do myself, like write a song that's very hard to sing and then just give it to Crick. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll definitely continue. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy uh, that it's turned out the way that it has for 2024 and then we'll cross our fingers and see what can happen in 25. Crick. Obviously, next week we'll know whether you're competing at Euro uh, the Eurovision Song Contest or not. How will that feel to you if you get that opportunity to go to, to Malmo in Sweden, fly the Luxembourg flag? How will that feel to you? I want that so badly. <laughs> you can't imagine how much. <laughs> that would be such a big, 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 not bucket list point, but such a big thing in my life. I think that would be so amazing. I really, really hope that people will vote for me. Perfect. I'm sure they will. Before we, we finish up, did you have any kind of messages for your fans, the people that will be listening to this, maybe before or after the show? Quick, what would you like to pass on to, to the, the listeners or viewers? Well, I'm a very self-critic person, so I'm never satisfied with what I'm doing. And um, now I really worked on that and I learned that I am good enough. I am beautiful, <laughs> even though I woke up now, <laughs> 20 minutes ago, um, and I'm smart and everything that your little uh, voices tell you that you're not, just don't listen and do your thing what you want to do. Perfect. You look great for having just rolled out of bed. Um, I had to do a last minute dash to brush my hair before uh, I turned my video on because it's a little bit out of control. So uh, I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel you completely. Um, and Elsie, of course, as well. Do you have a message for, for your fans that may be listening and watching as well? I'm just going to wish everyone a happy uh, Eurovision season and hoping, hoping that people will tune into the Luxembourg finals and check us out and hope you like our song. <laughs>